Hello and welcome to Hudson Bros. This week we're taking a look at Lactobacillus. Which is not your average yogurt. For an open window on a crappy world. Max and Chris from Ups and Brews. Ups and All right, so lactobacillus. Lactobacillus, uh, in the last few years, has been a part of, of the life of a brewer. I'd say 10 years ago or even five years ago, lacto was an infection that you didn't want in your beer. Now brewers are actively looking to infect their beers with lactobacillus, which is a probiotic. And so actively looking into getting it that they're looking at alternatives to save money to not buy it from usual labs that create lactobacillus in laboratories and put actual ingredients that, that can contain infected. probiotics, which I'm not a huge fan of because by adding pure yogurt to your wort, you're not controlling what you're putting in. Yeah. Those companies like uh, Scarpin Labs or White Labs or uh, Y Labs or what's the other one, Omega, when they're creating lactobacillus, when they're creating a strain of this bacteria, because it is not a yeast strain, it is a bacteria, yep. um, they're, they're isolating a specific type of this kind of bacteria, which means that you're not, like in yogurt, you might have a bunch of different ones, or you might have another type of bacteria that made its way through and is yep. also uh, going to sour or do some funky things in your beer. So you kind of have to be mindful of that. Yeah, and you might not want those bacteria in there because if you look back in history, lacto has been present in beer since the dawn of <laughs> ages. The caveman was putting uh, literally cereals, water, and making it infect on itself. Yes, Brett was going in there, but lacto is one of the main things that's infecting pretty much everything from mankind in general. Yeah, when, when usually we're talking mostly about yeast fermenting beer, but different yeah. bacteria is also, uh, also ferment. Now, on paper, beer is pathogen free as soon as it hits your, your bottle because all the other organisms have worked through, but the, the different bacteria that will affect the flavor of beer generally will not be damaging for, for the human body. I mean, you might get sick, but it's not gonna kill you. Yep. Uh, Lactobacillus, Pediococcus, uh, Acetahelahi, Acetahelahi, no, I always forget, Acetic? No, I forget the name. Anyways, uh, that creates more of that vinegar sourness. They're all different bacteria. Yep. They will create different amount of sourness at different intensity. So lacto is, is fairly controllable. Yep. Uh, as soon as it hits a certain pH, it kind of stops by itself because it, it can't go further. Uh, Pedococcus doesn't give a, it just keeps on going and ferment and, and, and drops that pH even lower, as low as it possibly so can. So more sourness, more pedo. Yeah, so yeah, more more PDO, more sourness. Uh, very active in barrels. So, I mean, there's a couple different ways that you can use lactobacillus. Your main way is to do a kettle sour. So you're adding your lacto in the uh, in the kettle. So poise, you do a little boil uh, of your wort. You don't add any hops. You drop that temperature down to about 40 degrees Celsius. You add your lactobacillus in the kettle. You pump in CO2 on top and you seal everything so that no oxygen makes it its way inside. You wait about 24 hours or however long it takes for that pH to drop down to 3.2. Then you boil it to kill off the bacteria hop it and then send it to one of your fermenters. That's the most common way. Second most common way is mixed fermentation, which means that you're letting your multiple organisms play together inside of, of stainless. So you're adding your, your lacto first uh, with no hops from your, your wort, but uh, you're not going to kill off that bacteria. You're gonna let it sour to the point you're looking for. You then have to blend in a second batch full of hops to kill off, or not kill off, but suppress the lactobacillus. So because the lacto hops are suppressing lactobacillus exactly. action. Exactly. It won't it, kill it off, but no. it will suppress its action it, in your beer. It's gonna stop it from souring that wort forward. Uh, therefore, you want to add a bunch of hops to, to stop it. And usually it's around five to 10 IBUs is when your lacto is not gonna be able 
to keep on souring. Uh, and that's when you add also your, your normal brewer's yeast and your wild yeast if you want. So they all kind of play together to ferment. I find they're more balanced beers, but it's a little more dangerous. Uh, if you don't yeah. want to cross-contaminate any of your other beers, I'd avoid that. I'd avoid that, especially in bottling and canning. You shouldn't uh, bottle or can clean beers and funk beers on the same canning line because that's where you have issues happen. For yep. the rest, you usually can sanitize pretty easily. Yeah, with the, what's the name of the washing process in beer? I forgot. CIP? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. CIP. A, a proper CIP will get rid of most of those. Yeah. Uh, but when it comes to, to, to bottling or canning, there's a lot of little uh, dead spots, dead legs that, that a lot yeast, of yeah, a, a huge amount that yeast can just kind of live there. So it's kind of hard. And it's um, known for that because yeah. there's a lot of beers that got infected with lactobacillus back in the days. Um, we have some examples in the fridge of beers that got infected mm -hmm. that were thrown away and we kept them yeah. because they were actually good yeah um and we kept them and they kept growing and evolving <laughs> as newer beers and i think that lactobacillus is a very fantastic bacteria if you look at it from pretty a standpoint of it's everywhere in mm -hmm. our day-to-day -day lives yeah. like you eat yogurt it, it is great for your gut health it's very uh, good and it's great for other health uh for for other sexes uh which every time i, I do tours uh the brewery i work at and, and we talk about lactobacillus and some girls sometimes go like oh you mean like and i always go yeah exactly like that oh which is, yeah <laughs> which is really interesting we did um, a video on that right we did a video on that and lacto i believe was one of the big things in in that that beer that was produced in Russia. Was it Russia? No, in uh, Czech Republic? No, I think it's a Belgian beer. It was Belgian? Yeah. Okay. Belgian Anyways. are very big on yeah. uh, objectifying women in a way that's kind of like inappropriate. Yeah. I'm not generalizing Belgium. You guys do amazing beers, but sometimes you're a little bit off limits on what you put on your labels or in your actual beers. So yeah, uh, even though it was like elevated in laboratories and all that, yeah, I'm pretty yeah. sure you guys know it what we're kinda, talking about. Weird, yeah. Videos right there, if especially you when, when you have Germany right next to there that are very purist about what you put in beer, and then you've got the uh, Belgium beer brewers going like, ah, put anything in there, we'll see what happens, which is pretty phenomenal. Uh, and, and just, uh, I don't know if we explained this before, I don't think we mentioned it, but uh, lacto is a bacteria, we mentioned that a lot, and yeast is not, yeast no. is a fungus. So there are two different types of organisms that ferment in similar ways, yet different, but they work in a symbiotic way to start off with, yep. where um, lacto can survive into a little bit of alcohol, and yeast likes to be in an environment that's a little acidic. So they're kind of symbiotic when it comes they to work. fermentation. They work together and, and, to survive, and. exactly. So that it is, it is an organism that's very close to brewing. Uh, the third way uh, not to, because I, I, every time we forget to do the third one, we start like, a one, two, there's gonna be and three then, ways, and then we never say the third never, way. Never, 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 never shows up, it's happened before. Anyways, the third way uh, of doing this is in barrels. <laughs> now, when it comes to barrels, there's something a little different where, um, because of the nature of wood, your organisms are always gonna be in the barrel. They're gonna bore yep. on the pores of that wood in between fills and you're always gonna have a complex mix fermentation type thing like we've had in the previous video uh, from earlier. Now, in, in the case of sours, sa barrel aged sours, uh, you don't want a lot of hops because you want your lacto to be active. Yep. But by doing so, you're also activating other bacteria that are souring. Uh, there, uh, and the big one is, is, is pediococcus. Pediococcus. Pediococcus Which is the, you don't want because it tastes you know, too You know, you don't necessarily not want. No. Uh, and, and that's what I'm coming to oh, is okay. when it comes to barrels, it's not about a one barrel to one set of bottles. There's always a blend happening. So always. you might want one barrel that is overly sour. Yep. And then you might want a few barrels that you've added a bunch of IBUs in to, to stop that sourness from oh. happening period having only funk and then you can blend it in the sour to readjust your ph in the end so using a little bit less of this one in this one and this one to create a more upfront less tart beer because you get more sourness of your classic exactly one i think um, small pony barrel works is one of the first breweries that comes yeah. to my mind because they use a lot of that bacteria yeah. in their beers yeah i think it's, uh, small pony has uh, pediococcus in most of their beers okay they're all very very tart very sour they yeah. sour usually a little lower um other breweries that come to mind uh, uh half hours i believe has some barrel aging Oh yeah, yeah, of yeah. course, yeah. So uh, the other one, Bench Brewing, 
that yep. I work at. Uh, we're not biased. Uh, they're not biased at all. So Bench Brewing. Check out, check out Bench Brewing. They yeah, do yeah, amazing right. beers. Yeah. Uh, they have a very cool funk side. If you guys, we, we talked about yeah. it, about not bottling and canning on the same thing. Since <laughs> Max uh, can't talk about it because it's biased, well, I mean, I'm going to yeah, talk about I mean, it because I saw the whole thing and it's very fantastic. But they have a clean side separated with an actual uh, room to separate the funk and the clean side. And I think it's just fantastic. It, it, I know that not all breweries can do it because it's very expensive, but it's cool to see that you realize how the funk can infect a beer very fast. And being at bench, seeing that separation between both of them really shows like it, it can get very bad. Now you you definitely want to separate both sides. Now uh, the reason I was bringing them up is yep. for the blending concept, where we've got 420 something barrels, and it, it's never a one barrel to one set of bottles. It's always a blend because you do want to balance those yep. flavors. Uh, and the last one that comes to mind, Halcyon from uh, associated Bose. with with Bose, uh, Bryce o o over there who uh, did some great things. Love that brewer. I think he's awesome, uh, and he he. Really really developed that barrel program to the next level. Uh, when it comes to, to blending, it's all out of palette work, and he did a great job with that stuff. Uh, and to this day, I think that uh, a blender or um, <clears throat> barrel making or barrel work never been as well explained as this a podcast with um, the Barrel Master at New Belgium with Good Beer Hunting. If you guys have the chance to check it out, I'll leave a link down there in the description. It's well explained and also it shows a passion towards barrel blending or yeah. barrel making it, not barrel making, but making beer to, with barrels. New Belgium has a very unique, not a unique way, but it's, I think it's pretty cool. The job sounds amazing. I want to be a barrel blending thing. Yeah, it's that, fun, that, man. That's my dream job. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah. When it, when it comes to brewing, it's the dream job of a lot of, a lot of people. I'm pretty sure there, there's no classes for that. It's all no. palette. Oh so. yeah. It's all palette stuff. Uh, so that's pretty much lacto in beer. Uh, if you'd like to know more about other different bacteria that are used to ferment beer, let yeah. us know in the comments below. And if you like the video, please leave a like, subscribe, share with your friends and, uh, help us built the Hobson Bros Empires. And before we leave, and usually we do that at the beginning of the video, uh, we got shirts. So uh, nice little, actually little, wearing. Yeah, it. exactly. A little uh, hop in the uh, upper left corner. Awesome design by David Buis. Very um, talented artist. Very talented artist. I, we love the shirts. I'm, I'm in the process of ordering a bunch more because I love them so much. Oh, yeah. uh, so if you um, if, if you like these shirts, if you want to buy one, yeah. uh, link is in the description. Just click on it. Perfect. Follow for instructions. It's perfect for Christmas. That's uh, honestly most of my Christmas gifts this year are, are shirts, Hobson Bro shirts. Oh, so, shirt. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, I, oh my God. Okay. So on that note. Oh. Uh, oh yes. And I, I, I didn't actually say it, so I don't know if we're going to get tinged for no, that. No, 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 but yeah. I have my dad card, so it, 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 everything's dad, fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, dad card. <laughs>